Hello. Good very morning in Belfast. <laughs> good morning, Dr. Aiswarya Patel. How are you? And good afternoon in, in yeah, Indonesia. Yeah. Good, af- good afternoon from here. How are you? I'm okay. I'm doing very well. <laughs> right. It's okay. Is it okay for you to, I mean, to start your your life very early today? <laughs> no, problem. no problem. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> All right. It's great. Okay. Uh, anyway, welcome, uh, Dr. Aiswarya Patil, my lovely colleague, and then welcome everyone. Um, today topic will be very interesting because this is about gender. So Aiswarya Patil will be uh, presenting her study, her current study about uh, gender equalities and career progressions of women employed in IT sector in the Indian context. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, we invite Dr. Aizwarya Patil to present to us her study on gender issue. And this will be focused specifically on the perceptions and experiences of women in India about the gender inequalities in the IT organizations and their family. I think uh, everyone here will be very, you know, like interested in understanding more, exploring more. And then we would really expect you to elaborate more your findings regarding this you know, very interesting and sexy issue. Well, uh, before further, uh, having Aizwarya Patil to present her study uh, on gender equalities, allow me to uh, read um, her very short CV. I think everyone would need to know her more by contacting her directly through her email address or her social media. I know that you're on Facebook, on Twitter, on any social media, Dr. Aizwarya Patil. Right, so Dr. Aizwarya Patil, formerly uh, assistant professor in Pune University in India and a corporate consultant. Uh, see, uh, her bachelor was in engineering and master's in English literature. And then Dr. Aizwarya is a recent doctoral graduate from Queen's University in Belfast. And then she has 15 plus years of experience in education as well as corporate sector. Mm. And then she was awarded Best Teacher Prize in 2013. And she was employee of the year for three consecutive years in IBM India. What a great achievement. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Let, let me know if you are ready with the presentation. Yes, of course. I yes. Am. OK, so yeah. uh, everyone, I think, would be really um, you know, eager to listen and to hear your presentation on the issue. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Aizwarya Patil. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, Udi. And well, well, uh, once again, a very good afternoon to everybody who is participating today to listen to me. And uh, I'm, as I told uh, in the beginning that I'm really very excited and very happy to be presenting to you. Uh, There are two reasons for it because one, one of the reasons is I feel the connect with Indonesia. Now, why? Now, there are two reasons for that also. One is our ancient ties. India and Indonesia had ancient uh, ties. And, you know, that is what makes me feel connect. And other reason is my friends who were my colleagues in my PhD journey, uh, Dr. Udi Samanhudi included into that. So, you know, those friends have been, I have created for lifelong. So, you know, it is very great pleasure to be presenting to you. And let me then, you know, give my heartfelt gratitude to your international office, as well as Dr. Udi Samanhudi for inviting me to be uh, one of the speakers in your research talk series. So without further ado, now let me talk about my research. Let me share my screen. Uh, I hope you guys are able to see that. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. So um, as, as, as I told you that my topic is about gender equalities and career progression of Indian women employed in the IT sector. So what, what prompted me because every research idea has a trigger behind it. So let me talk about my trigger. Uh, as Udi, while introducing me, told that I am an engineer, bachelor's degree in engineering. So I was employed by I- IBM. And uh, when IBM employed me, my peers spotted my training potential. 
So they gave me the responsibility of training the entry level engineers as well as develop the management development programs and all that. So I could see that at entry level, the the representation of men and women is fairly equal. Like you know, uh, not completely equal, but fairly equal. And then you know, while doing management development programs, I could see it is populated by men and very few women. So that question started bugging my mind that when IT sector recruits employees on the basis of merit and on the basis of talent, so these women who are recruited by IT sector are meritorious and talented, there is no doubt about it, but why this talent and merit is not getting translated into career progression, why they are not progressing to the management level. So, you know, that when it started bugging my mind, it became my trigger. And then I resigned from all my responsibilities in Pune University and then, you know, took up my journey to Belfast where my research proposal was accepted. So that was my trigger. And uh, well, of course, the agenda of it's a standard agenda, you know, uh, I will give you introduction about my research and all that. But I want you to focus on this particularly. Uh, let me make it bigger for you to. So this is the state of women representation in the IT sector, particularly in India. You know that the world is confronted with the underrepresentation of women in the STEM disciplines, particularly. India is not confronted with the underrepresentation of STEM uh, women in STEM disciplines, but it is rather confronted with why women are not progressing. So you will see that the entry level is software engineers. And I, as I told you, the representation is fair enough, um, comparatively far better than the rest of the world. So 34% women are recruited in the ICT employment. And then when it comes to the middle level, it is the percentage of men and women you see, 66, 34, 70, 30. Then the project managers, there are 92% men and only 8% women. And when you go to the CEO positions and all that, 99% men sit on the top of the IT, whereas only 1% women uh, make it to the board. So what goes wrong? That was my trigger. And that is the reason why after an in-depth literature search, I found my research questions. So as I told you that these are women's views and perspectives, it is not my views or my perspectives. So I examined, uh, I explored these research questions based on the perspectives of uh, women. So my first research question, the main research question was, what are the perceptions of women about the difficulties and challenges that they encounter while progressing in their career? And then, how do they perceive the culture and structure of IT organizations? And then what are the perceptions of women on the penalties of motherhood and informal appraisals leading to career progression? Motherhood is really a significant factor in every woman's life and it has significantly influenced the career decisions of women. So I could not help but put this question forth. And then uh, my research also has uh, social uh, policies included. So policy analysis was one of the important factors of my research. So one of the research questions then constitute how do women perceive equal opportunities and the work family uh, policies of the government and the IT organizations. Now, I would like to talk about methodology. Now, when you talk about the perceptions uh, and views and opinions of your participants. And when you try to understand the careers of women, which itself is a very complex issue, it, it, it cannot be unidimensional issue. It, it has several layers to it. So the complexities, if you want to unravel the complexities of human life, the best suited method is the qualitative inquiry. I mean, I could have done it with quantitative inquiry, but you know, when you talk about views and opinions and when you are addressing the complexities of life, the best suited was qualitative methodology. So my methodology was semi-structured in-depth interviews with 40 women engineers employed in the IT sector. The sample that I have chosen is the purposive criterion sample. So purposive criterion sample, why? Because um, I wanted to capture the views and opinions of women employed at the different levels of career. 
that is entry level middle level senior level you know and because why because i feel that they will perceive their career and the career outcomes in a different way so i wanted to have those varied opinions of the women employed at the different levels of promotions at the same time another uh, dimension i have added to my sample it is i have investigated single women as well as married women and married women who are mothers so that was another criteria because each women will have different difficulties and challenges you know uh, progressing in their career so it was a purposive criterion sample and then you know uh, with that i proceeded you know my inquiry <clears throat> next slide okay slide show next so when we talk about any research it has to be substantiated or based on a very solid theoretical foundations so there were several theoretical perspectives available to me you know when you talk about women's studies feminism is what comes to anybody's mind in the first place so feminism is a western concept and the uh, you know the tenets of feminism couldn't be applied to the indian society which doesn't recognize feminism as west recognizes it though even though now the present generation of women are uh, understanding the concept of feminism and going through it but it cannot be applied straight away western can concepts cannot be picked up and applied straight to the societies which are not western so i discarded feminism then there was several uh, theories like doing gender by west timmerman and uh, other writers you know it has contributed to the scholarships in many gender studies and all that but uh, i couldn't uh, choose that mainly because it was not uh, taking into consideration how women negotiate those difficulties and challenges so the action element you know the uh, women's strategies were not included in doing gender theories so when i was reading to have my theory you know examining various perspectives and all that i came into uh, read women in science and engineering by julia evets julia evets is a professor in uh, university of nottingham and she had provided a solid theoretical foundation so based on her theory i mean i used her theory and it is the three dimensional uh, theory of um, examining women's career progression so what are these three dimensions it, the argument is the culture and structure of organization and the culture and structure of family influences the decisions that women make about their careers so this is um, you know a comprehensive theoretical framework which talks about both culture and structure culture is uh, you know the environment and structure is the hierarchy uh, how the hierarchy is placed and you know family and organization both have influences on women's uh, career decisions so these two influences the action element of the uh, women's career outcomes so this was the best suited theoretical framework and on the basis of that i have analyzed my data and i have analyzed my findings so therefore my findings have again three chapters in my research one is related to organizations the other one is related to family and the third one is policies and every factor how the culture and structure of each actually influences the decisions that women have made so i have got very interesting findings in my research so let us talk about my findings now so organizational findings now all the 40 women whom i interviewed have unanimously expressed the views that inequalities exist in indian it organizations or multinational they are actually multinational it organizations and employees now what kind of inequalities exist so number one is uh, there is a stereotypical thinking that women and technology don't go together so women are weak in technology so that is a general perception you know it will change but 
the perception is still there. So women are not good in technologies. So what happens is when you think, when you have this presumption that women are not very good in computing technology or mathematics, you automatically exclude them in giving them the key responsibilities that translate into career profession. So, you know, uh, that stereotypical thinking. Another stereotypical thinking is women are, uh, you know, not very serious about their careers. It, there is always a presumption that these women, entry level women engineers are just 21 years old or 22 years old, you know, single, not married. But the managers think that, okay, they will get married. They will go with their husbands. Then motherhood will feature in their life. So they will not be interested in their careers. So these presumptions operate a lot in the treatment of women in IT organizations. So, and the culture is masculine. It still favors men. Masculine in the sense that there is a concept of ideal worker. These two are interlinked. Ideal worker is one who is available for organization 24 by seven, whenever is asked for. Now this concept of ideal work, <coughs> sorry, this concept of, <coughs> let me, <coughs> sorry about that. Have a drink, please. <laughs> the concept of ideal worker actually is a very wide concept and it, it has several dimensions. One is long working hours. One who can dedicate long working hours, it's synonymously taken as very committed employee because the employee has all the time to give to organization. And IT, Indian IT sector is predominantly service sector as you are aware of, because a lot of work from USA, UK and uh, Europe gets outsourced to India because India has uh, a pool of qualified engineers you know, a large pool of qualified engineers, and they can work comparatively on the lower salaries compared to the American salaries or the UK salaries or something like that. So it becomes very easy for these um, uh, giants like American giant companies or UK giant companies or any to outsource their work to India. Now, when you are a service sector catering to the to your clients across the globe, which means that you are working, you have to work in different time zones. Now, you have to consider the time difference between India and US is approximately 11 hours. India and UK is four and a half or five and a half hours. And same uh, with Australia and other countries. So definitely Indian uh, IT organization has a culture of long working hours. Now, long working hours, considering the family culture of India, you know, where women still are caregivers, women still share a lot of responsibilities at, at home. And, uh, you know, uh, that becomes challenging for them to, you know, spend long working hours in the office. So naturally, women are excluded because they are not taken as committed workers and men are taken as committed workers. Now, what happens when men are taken as committed workers? Naturally, the key work and key responsibilities go to men and women are excluded. So there is a lot in work allocation, which is actually leading to promotions. My next point, work allocation happens on the basis of how available you are for work. So in ICT employment, the technical uh, role is always key role that translates into career progression. Whereas the supportive role like business analyst or quality control or testers and all that, these are supportive roles that do not get translated into career progression as such. Now, technical roles, you need to work for longer hours. Women find it difficult to work for longer hours. So work allocation happens in such a way that supporting role goes to women and key roles go to men. It is not always, but majority of the time it happens like that. So naturally the promotions are affected and promotions also has several layers. Like for example, two of my participants who were pregnant and uh, worked during their cycle of pregnancy, all nine months they were working and they took maternity leave after 
you know, nine months, like when they were due for delivery of the child. Now, their managers denied them appraisal, flatly denied them appraisals, even after working for nine months. So they were really agitated that why after working for nine months during the cycle of our pregnancy and taking maternity leave after that, why we were denied appraisals. One of the women, you know, she kept silent. The other women, woman escalated the matter. But the manager flatly told her that when you become mother, you become useless to the organization. Why? Because your time will be devoted to your child. So we will see how committed you are after the birth of your child and then only give you your appraisal. So this is blatant discrimination, you know, which is not acceptable. When a woman is working, you should uh, give her appraisal. But assuming that she will not be focused on her career, this is called as motherhood penalty. You know, women are paying uh, penalties of being mothers. So uh, the term coined by, uh, you know, B uh, Bernard and uh, other social scientists, they call it motherhood penalty. And working mothers are, I have discovered in my um, research that working mothers are more discriminated than non-mothers and men. So, you know, motherhood ap uh, appears to be very significant, uh, what you can say, factor influencing women's career decisions. Now, let us talk about motherhood. Since we, I hinted at motherhood and shadow mothering. Shadow mothering, let me explain this term to you, that mothering work is delegated to others. Like you have nannies, you have, uh, you know, your grandmother, you know, grandfather at home considering Indian family structure. So they look after the child. That is called as sh shadow mothering. Delegating mothering work except giving birth and breastfeeding the child. All the work that the child requires, all the care that child requires is given by either a paid employee like nannies or a close relative who lives in your house. So that is called as shadow mothering. So let me talk about women's status. As you know that India is still male-dominated male society. So women's status is subordinate to men. Women are still not regarded as primary uh, breadwinners. Like, for example, if, uh, if a decision has to be taken that a woman is employed and a man is employed, uh, husband and wife both are employed, and one needs to sacrifice the career, it is the woman always who is expected to sacrifice her career. So that, that is uh, the society, you know, Indian society, and it will take a lot of time to evolve. Uh, it, the change is happening, you know, we are in the transit mode, you know, there are, there are old customs and traditions, as well as the new that uh, era that is coming. So slowly the society is transiting, but at present also the subord subordinate status is there. Therefore, career decisions are not entirely women's career decisions. It is the family decision because we are a collective society. We are not individual society. So the decisions of careers of women are taken by all the family members. And uh, what happens is motherhood is really important um, factor. You know, every mother, uh, every uh, woman wishes to be a mother. And uh, Indian concept of motherhood is really glorified. We actually even, uh, you know, worship uh, women deities like, you know, as Mata and, uh, you know, Mother Durga Mata and all that, you know, we have uh, deities and all that. So mother status is glorified. She is considered as uh, uh, the first guru, that is first teacher of the child, which means that uh, giving uh, care and teaching to the child is always ultimately mother's responsibility. So she is held responsible for the nourishment, not uh, nurture, the care and, you know, developing a next generation. She is the one who is responsible for developing the next generation. So a lot of responsibility is on mother's shoulders. And what happens? Women, when they become mothers, naturally, uh, the na natural instinct uh, that draws them towards their child, you know, makes them actually feel rather guilty when they are working that they are not spending time with their child. So that also influences. So what happens is mothers 
when they are career oriented, they are not liked in Indian society. Mothers should be mothers and not career women. So that actually is a family pressure that you should keep on working, but don't think about accepting new responsibilities at work because you are now a mother. So you should focus on your motherhood and your child rather than intensive mothering. You know, intensive mothering is a concept developed by Hayes, uh, uh, an American uh, social scientist. But that in intensive mothering, which she talks about, beyond that goes the Indian concept of mothering. So it is, you know, the whole world revolves around the ch child. So naturally, many women, you know, uh, constrained by this uh, particular motherhood, you know, they take their career decisions, negotiate their careers in such a way that they accept subordinate rule, roles and not go in for the technical roles because that takes a lot of time from them. And shadow mothering, well, of course, there is a beauty. Uh, this is a beauty of Indian society that shadow, shadow mothering by and large is not paid because the grandparents, you know, they, with, the, with their natural affection, you know, extend their support in <clears throat> taking care of the child. Now, <clears throat> this shadow mothering in India is done largely by the grandmothers. But I have one interesting finding here. Two of my participants, they said that they don't have their mother-in-law. So there is no grandmother. And they have decided to quit their job because they have become mothers and there is no one to support, you know, no one to give, extend the child care support. And putting in the paid child care was also, uh, they did not want it to do. But at that time, their fathers-in-law stepped in, prevented these uh, women from resigning from job, quitting the job, and they have extended their full support in taking care of the child. And I would like to say this, this is really an interesting finding that shadow mothering when women do and shadow mothering when men do, there are gender differences between shadow mothering of women and men. And here, the gender differences are in favor of men because women like mothers-in-law of these women when they did this shadow mothering they put conditions that i will look after your child but you should not accept any new responsibilities at your work but these two men when they became shadow mothers of their grandchildren they not only extended full support but never put any conditions on their daughters-in-law whether to accept the role or not accept the role. They, in fact, encouraged these women to take up new responsibilities and progress their, the progress in their career. And these two women were in the senior management. They were project managers that I've in, it, interviewed. So, you know, it is surprising that, uh, you know, even though it is a couple of incidents, you know, still I had a sample of 40. And in that two women, if they say that, you know, men all men as shadow mothers are more, what you can say, more supportive. I have to mention this interesting finding, but definitely motherhood uh, really has affected and that, is, that has been really um, one of the factors. Even the women managers, while allocating work responsibilities to their women subordinate in the IT organization, always consider motherhood and then allocate responsibilities. So even women, you know, uh, when they become managers, they think like managers and not uh, as women, you know, managers and the work. So that also is one of the interesting findings. And then last segment of my findings was uh, women's perceptions of policies. Now, India has Equal Pay Act 1976, which uh, prevents any sorts of discrimination in payment for the same value of work or the same nature of work, but still gender pay gap exists in Indian IT sector. And women acknowledge that they have less salaries than men, even though salary is a confidential matter. But one of the women, she felt that she's being paid less and she then digged into the matter and found out that, you know, she has been really paid considerably less. Maternity Benefit Act, when I conducted this, this remains the limitation of my research actually, 
because when I conducted interviews with these women, the Maternity Benefit Act was not amended. It got amended in 2017 and got implemented in 2018. By that time, I had completed my research. That time, it was three months, that is 90 days paid maternity leave to the women. <clears throat> and women at that time said that it is too less. And <clears throat> they wanted some sort of improvement in that. And one of the women participants, she had adopted a child and there was no adoption leave given to her. Though she insisted and got on the goodwill of her manager some three weeks to take care of her child. So women's opinions were not favorable. But in 2018, India amended the Maternity Benefit Act and now it is six months paid leave and six months unpaid leave, like one year women can take the career break. And there is a 12 weeks provision of adoption leave as well. Now, I couldn't, you know, then get the opinions of, and this remains the limitation of my uh, research. And work family friendly policies, women wanted, you know, women, all women participants said that we are ready to update our technology. We like technology, but our organizations should consider flexible working hours because that then you know will help us not only in giving our 100% to the organization but you know we can look after our house so that everybody demanded flexible working hours and flexible working hours are rare in IT organizations now because of pandemic, they have started, you know, giving working from home and all that. So women have now flexible working hours, but in those time that was not there and employees were not trusted, particularly women employees were not trusted for working from home because the managers always thought that they will be carried away by household responsibilities and will not work. So work from home was always denied to women and not to men. So all these taken into consideration, I have come to the conclusion that definitely the culture and structure of organization and the culture and structure of family influences the choices that women make because women's choices I have found whatever career they have chosen and the roles that they have chosen revolves around, they are constrained by the culture and structure of family and organization. So that's all. Thank you. If you have any questions, please shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, brilliant presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Aiswarya Patil. Now I think time for question and answer session. I would like to invite uh, participants to, you know, yes. ask queries or quest questions to uh, Dr. Patil. Please raise your hand and then Ask the questions. Any questions, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. All right. Okay, I, I think I, I would like to start asking you a question, which I think uh, quite um, interesting about, about your, your study that is about the concept of inequalities. All right. So I'm wondering if you could like... Um, highlight the, the perceived concept of inequalities among the participants. What do they think about inequalities? Because there are 40 participants, five might think that certain conditions is, in, is considered inequality, but for some other five participants, they might think it is not. So could you please like highlight again the, gen the general issue of inequalities that your yes. participants yeah. brought yeah. into uh, your so. studies? Yeah, inequalities, women hinted at both family and organization. But I would like to say that one of the participants, she said that though inequalities are there, you know, it, it is up to us to navigate our way. So, you know, each woman, individual woman is different in responding to the constraints. But I would like to hint at one of the participants. How, I mean, two examples I'll give you how, uh, 
inequalities are there. One is from the family perspective and other is from the organizational perspective. So family perspective, one of my participants was a meritorious engineer and uh, she began her career and was progressing in her career. She has, uh, she has got married to another engineer who works in IT organization. And then he wanted to move abroad because he was interested in pursuing career abroad for some time. Now, when it came to, she was progressing really very fast because she, she is really talented. And she want, in her heart, she didn't want to leave her progressing career like that. But she has to ultimately, because of the family pressure and all that, she has to resign and move with him to United States of America. Now there he started his project. Then she also started, you know, getting work and then started working. Again, she was progressing. He decided to move to Belfast. So she has to re relocate. And then she has to start from a scratch. And after Belfast, he moved to Dublin. He worked there for six, seven years and they decided to return back to India. Now, when they returned back to India, he got the senior position and she has to work as a junior despite a flourishing career. So you can see the range of inequality that is there. One is not only that a woman has to move along with her husband, leaving her career, that is one of the inequalities. But when they return back, the husband's career flourishes and the wife needs to start from the scratch. I mean, she, with all her experience in IT sector, could get a junior role. And she said that I am still, you know, I was a senior level manager when I quit my job in India. And I am now working as entry level engineer after so much of work. So you mm -hmm. can see the range of inequalities there. And another is one of my participants, you know, when she was promoted, she, she still is in technical role and she wants to progress and all that. When she was promoted as an architect, Architect is not building architect. Architect is one of the positions in IT, uh, ICT employment. So when she was made an architect and was asked to lead the team of 100 engineers, one of the man engineers, he said that I cannot accept you as a leader. You are a woman. I cannot accept woman in authority. So she said, if you cannot, then resign from your job. So he resigned rather than working under her. So this is an example of hostile sexism, you know, uh, just not accepting women in authority. You know, one of the factors that contributes in allocation and promotion and appraisals that women are not promoted because women are, as leaders, are not tolerated by men who are their subordinates. So, you know, there are several such examples you know in my research that i've come across but at the same time as i told you that forget about men managers women managers also when they become one of my participants she is a project manager and she told me that while allocating work i have to take into consideration women's responsibilities at home and they being mother and all that so when IT organization require 24 by seven, women just can't fit in. And therefore, you know, I don't give uh, major responsibilities and roles to women. I always prefer men. So you can see that a woman, when she becomes a manager and uh, thinks from that perspective, so it is, again, women are excluded. I mean, women are not favored when there is a woman manager, I, I mean, it's not the case. So there are several angles to that. I mean, this is interesting finding. Why? Because when we are talking about women's studies, we, yes, I have done women's studies, but certain different findings, you know, always caught my attention that when, of course, we talk about discrimination, it happens. It is a reality. I don't deny that it is a reality, but, uh, but women as managers behave as managers, not women. So that is one of the interesting findings. So th there are, I mean, a lot of inequalities in family. Also, there are inequalities like mm -hmm. status is subordinate, of course. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, one of the part- participants I means she started earning more than her husband she was taunted <laughs> her husband was taunted her husband was told that she will dominate you because she is mm. earning more and all that so she started feeling guilty about it unnecessarily i mean so these kinds of stories are also there very interesting stories <laughs> my participants have told yes mm. there yeah, was the, someone yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. I, I don't know if you did a, I mean, a similar study in our context here in Indonesia, the finding might be the same. <laughs> yes, yes, because we are same societies, you know. <laughs> You're right. Okay, yeah. I'll invite uh, participants to, uh, you know, like ask questions. So Budina, I think, uh, would be really uh, interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dr. Macro Pramana, okay. please. Thank you, Aswara Patil. Uh, Maybe more general question. Uh, I just wondering if, when you talk about um, gender equality and suppose in the future what you expect is um, done. So the, there is a gender equality between women and men. Uh, but I'm connecting with what you taught uh, to us that India has a high value of motherhood. Yes. So. In the side effect, if what you expect to the gender equality is happen, side effect is uh, what about the motherhood? Because you thought that motherhood, it, it means um, nurturing children, it means yeah. nurturing nation. So yes. when uh, the, the more um, women engage in work and it means less for nurturing children, Okay, so what is uh, in general point of view if all the women uh, engage actively and um, we lack of nurturing children? Yes, okay. So let me begin by asking you a question. Is Can woman give birth to a child on her own? <laughs> okay, well, of course. All right. Okay. So... Uh, building a nation, of course, it is mother's responsibility. It is all, also a father's responsibility because the child is the child is not just of a mother, but of a father also. So mm-hmm. in order to bring in sort of not ignoring the nation building responsibility and at the same time, mm-hmm. you know, giving women her due, you know, mm-hmm. if we start sharing responsibilities, it mm-hmm. will ease out. You know, this is one of the solutions. And our societies are really traditional societies. And we have our parents, you know, who look after our children. So uh-huh. instead of abandoning our parents, you know, if we have the grandfathers and grandmothers love also included in that nurturing, I believe that it is going to help the child in growing up as a good citizen. So, you know, it is sharing sharing of the responsibility some sharing has to be done you know it is not the onus is entirely on women 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 never neglect their motherhood duties let me tell you all my participants they never neglected their motherhood duties they have actually their actions were such that they negotiated their careers around motherhood so it's not that they have neglected their duties, but they always raised a pertinent question that it is, ent- is it entirely our responsibility to look after the child? Father's responsibility. I have seen uh, Dr. Udi Samanhudi as a father, good father, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, me as well. Yeah. <laughs> I have further uh, question about it, um, Aswara. Uh, so we can conclude it that, yeah, Parents' responsibility. Father also uh, has the, their responsibility for, for children. Um, so uh, I want question about other parameters because if we I am looking at your presentation, the what is the criteria of um, equality in gender? It means that woman in the higher position. It means CEO, manager, or other uh, level. So. Yeah. That um, nurturing children and motherhood also some kind of work that uh, need to value more something like that because we can change the the contribution of yes. mother uh, father who, who change the contribute the contribution of uh, mother so of course we can we can do it 
yes but so that's my finding you know women most of the women uh, negotiated and accepted subordinate roles why because motherhood was important to them okay. so it has it, it is women's views and perspectives it is not my opinion you know it is women's views and perspectives who have put lot of emphasis on their motherhood rather than on career progression so that is my finding and that's 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 there you know and uh, there is i as a researcher if you ask me a view well of course it is important to every woman you know motherhood is important to every woman but at the same time uh, as a woman and my participants also express that we don't get any help from our husband that was their complaint so you have to uh, as men think about that you want your wives to work also and to be good mothers also two things cannot be go cannot go hand in hand so you have to share responsibility little to little extent like at least studies of the child you can take you can suppose the woman is dropping that child to the school you can pick up that child from the school you know such kinds of responsibilities if they are shared probably they might accept some some sort of new responsibilities and roles because ultimately you know when i asked these women they wanted to progress but they have taken decisions women women's decisions are not independent you know they are constrained they are constrained by motherhood they are constrained by family status and all that so if some support is given to them they will you know find their ways to have some satisfaction at work for it also so that's what as a researcher i believe i mean <laughs> not as women participants <laughs> Right. Okay, Dr. Macro would like to explore more, or you you stop and then think again the question, and then it's <laughs> okay. I I I I just wondering if um uh, there is uh, another perspective about um uh, yeah good job for um women not another kind of job also that you are not uh. Work in. or something like that it will be um, yeah very great you can see the data in other um, women in other fields you want to say yeah. women in yeah. other fields yeah 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 uh, women uh, let me tell you that banking and finance women in india are really progressing i mean the ceo of six nationalized banks are women and uh, i mean all india head and in banking sector if i go to any bra- uh, ma- uh, bank the branch manager you know majority of them i find women so there they are progressing but there, there you don't have the culture of long working hours 24 by 7 you know it's different so there women are progressing but that doesn't mean that women don't want to uh, w- should not go to it and go to banking and uh, finance because it is after all woman's choice what career she needs to choose so if she chooses it then she should have the support of progressing also <laughs> you know because yeah. of the pandemic uh, i just watching that like um maybe actually women are good in political and i saw like uh, angela mercer yes. or yes. <laughs> no there is we have 33% oh, yeah. quota well, for well, women well, in politics so or make this yeah, yeah. in crisis and so, the present maybe, government has very uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just an yeah. opinion <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and the pre- present government has a lot of women in the ministry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. Um, another participant, probably Bu Dina. Yes. Okay. Hi. A very interesting uh, research. Hi, I'm Dina. Uh, yes. I'm wondering. Uh, I believe that Indonesia is very similar to, or, or India is very similar to Indonesia in terms of the religiosity. Yeah, as I, I want to know the positions of the value of uh, religions. Yeah, uh, in your research, because from the three-dimensional theories that you use, yeah, uh, there are only three, 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 three. What is three aspect? That is uh, actions, organizations, and family. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how yeah. about then the religious values influence or uh, what is it? What? Yeah, let's say influence uh, the finding of your research or yeah, yeah. Wh- wh- where is it? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, Adina, um, IT sector, uh, what happens is uh, 
you can call intersectionality is not in my research because uh, that you can call it as a limitation. Why? Because IT sector recruits on the basis of strictly merit and talent, irrespective of caste, which is the predominant uh, uh, characteristic of Hindu religion, you know, Hinduism. And there are several religions, as you know, Islam is uh, there, Christianity is there, Jains, Buddhism, Sikhism, you know, a lot of. But IT sector doesn't have data religion wise or caste wise or something because it recognizes only merit and uh, talent. So irrespective of all this and it recruits. But then what happened is, uh, fortunately, I had one participant from uh, Islam. So in her case, I found that uh, these factors, the family and the organized Organization is same to all women, but family factors were more aggravated or more serious in her uh, career because she had to really face a lot of challenges, even as a working woman. So I could find that uh, she was more uh, at a disadvantageous situation, but she is, she, she is a talented engineer, no doubt, and she is in the middle level of management and she has aspiration to progress also and she has support of her husband but uh, her family members are not supportive so you know i i found that it is more aggravated but unfortunately i couldn't get the data from it organization you know religion wise caste wise or something like that so i couldn't but uh, it would be interesting to see you know how the women of uh, other religions not only religions but the women of uh, let's say socially disadvantaged castes, you know, how do they uh, face these constraints and challenges? Probably that could be for further research, you know, because it is my limitation. But fortunately, I had one participant and I could understand, you know, the kind of uh, difficulties that she was facing. They were more aggravated in their case. Yes. Yes. So that will be, will be your next research. Edit. We'll yes, yes, smart. yes. It would be <laughs> worthwhile to understand, you know, it, it yeah. would be worthwhile to understand. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Maybe yeah. we collaborate and do it. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> sure. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah other, other participants, please, for questions. Uh, sorry, sir, I would like to ask. Oh, yes, Maulana, please. Uh, yes. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, hello, my name is Maulana and I'm from Sultan Agung Tihtayasa University, Indonesia. But now okay. I'm here in Siliwangi University in West Java, Indonesia too. And okay. uh, before I ask my question, uh, I'm sorry for my bad in English and pronunciation. It's and... okay. It's not our language, you know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I heard that we we have a similarity in the culture be, between Indonesia and India, and I just realized that in international level that there is a gender gap, gay gap, gender pay gap, and yes. also the gender gap too, and uh, I wonder that, uh, and I keep thinking about. Who the who the person or or in the organization organization that falls about this uh, about the gender pay gap? Yeah, we know that uh, the regulation from uh, another country is a different, and in Indonesia we have the same problems too about the gender pay gender pay gap. And let's take an example from your country in India. Uh, who is the false from this situation? It is the government or the society by his stereotype or stigma? You know, uh, actually, I found very interestingly, uh, there are lapses in the act itself. The act that is Equal Remuneration Act of 1976. And of course, then women, you know, they have less bargaining power. You know, they accept it. And there are two things to it. First, let me elaborate on tax uh, act. Sorry, this Equal Remuneration Act says that you should not, you should pay equal salary to the equal similar kind of work. Okay, similar nature of work, kind of work. Now, when you say work, similar work, 
you know, you leave the gap there itself. You should say same value of work. So when it comes to value, then you cannot discriminate. But when it's you say similar work, so you can always play around that this work has more value and this work has less value. So the gap emerges from the uh, wrong wordings in the act. One of the reasons why uh, there is gender pay gap in India. Another reason is women are not supposed to voice their opinions freely, frankly, demand and all that. They have always been, uh, you know, uh, brought up with that, that you should be very sober, mild, speak in mild voice, you know, accept what elders say and all that. So women, when they start working, they are gratified that they have job in the first place. So they don't and salary being confidential matter, they don't have this bargaining power as men ha have, you know. They cannot negotiate across the tables their salaries. So they accept what they get and the gap emerges. And now I'll tell you, there are several states in India. If you ask me, overall gender pay gap, I'm not talking about IT sector, okay. Overall gender pay gap. In Maharashtra, it is 14%, whereas in Assam, it is 63%. So you can understand what kind of uh, variety, you know, we are a, a very diverse nation. So Maharashtra being progressive state and women being uh, in a better position than other state, you know, the gender pay gap is less. But whereas in Assam, which is a northeastern state of India, you know, when women, uh, women are now coming out of their houses to do job, the gender pay gap is 63%. So, you know, what happens is it is the agency of women at employment. Women can get together and demand, you know. Women should get together. Agency of women is really important. They should get together and demand. But there are always policies and laws in respective countries. You can always ask for redressal from laws. So that is what. But, you know... Uh, it is not that in India it exists or in Indonesia it exists. It exists in Western societies also, despite their very strong legislations. So something to do with women's bargaining capacity. <laughs> right. Very interesting. Uh, Malik, do you still have another question? Okay. Or... No, all right. Okay. Other participants, please. Okay, uh, I so you, you you've mentioned like some interesting finding. My question is that what is the most interesting finding from this study? These are two, you know, men as shadow shadow mothers and women as managers. You know, they are really interesting for me. Oh, I, <laughs> I mean. I said that all women's study should examine women managers also, you know, mm. <laughs> while uh, in, inquiring uh, career progression because uh, women, when they go to senior level, they forget about women's uh, fight and struggles in progressing right. their career and all that. And they strictly act as per the policies of the organization. So mm. that is very interesting finding. And another is I found really mind-blowing gender differences in shadow mothering like mm -hmm. i mean men giving unconditional support and women putting conditions while giving support so <laughs> that is another interesting finding so yes if you ask me these are two very interesting all right and okay. very outrageous was the resignation of that man not accepting woman as a leader you know that mm -hmm. was really outrageous finding wow. i mean yes <laughs> Do you think if, if you do the same or a similar study in Western context, the finding would be like totally different because of the, you know, different um, culture yeah. or different? Uh, yeah. I think it is uh, only difference will be the uh, in the fr framework of societies. Mm -hmm. Ours is a collective society and Western right. societies are individual societies, individualistic. Right. So when societies are collective and individualistic, 
there there are going to be differences but uh, the it organizations that i have examined are all multinational it organizations so they are not indian it organizations so they are multinational which means that the inequalities exist everywhere right so organization culture and structure i don't think that it is going to be very different but family culture and structure will be different mm-hmm. because of the inherent uh, differences between these two societies collective and individualistic but still motherhood is important to western societies as well as indian or mm-hmm. any other society so that plays role you know because i have uh, in my literature search found many western studies that talk about motherhood as being a hindrance into career progression of women so this is about western studies i'm not talking my study has found out uh, how big it is hindrance to for mm-hmm. indian women but you know western studies i have examined so motherhood remains the same everywhere right yeah. any one of you would like to scrutinize the study by asking more and more questions we still have 5 to 10 minutes anyway so <laughs> i would like to invite more participants to you know ask questions yes. in order to understand better the study that uh, Dr. Aiswarya Patil has uh, recently conducted. Yeah, this is, you know, this is super, I mean, super uh, research. And <laughs> Not a feminist research. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're right. Any more questions? Oh, I think for me myself I still have one 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 very okay. fundamental question oh, about no the problem. significance of the study so what this study has offered I mean the significance of this study to the literature or to the your society in India because we only speak you know 40 uh, participants how would you you know like yes. guarantee my that this really my contribution yes. your your community yes. what in quotes sorry well my contribution uh, I would list it number one is um you know lot of studies in indian context have happened uh, focusing work family balance and women you know uh, very few one or two studies have mentioned the career progression of women so i have comprehensively addressed the career progression and the difficulties and challenges that women perceive while and en- uh encounter while progressing in their career so career progression has been comprehensively addressed in my research whereas you know it has been a gap throughout in my literature search career progression so that is there another important aspect of my research is i have done the policy analysis there is complete one chapter in my research which is the policy analysis as mm-hmm. a literature review mm-hmm. and then I have actually investigated women's views and perceptions about all rules regulations and laws in India when it comes to careers of women so that again remains uh, a very original contribution because nobody has yet it is a huge gap that policy research has there has been dearth in India of policy research you know there is no policy research and only the legal graduates you know they investigate policies but social scientists you know don't delve deep into the policies of uh, government and the uh, organizations and all that so i did that so i have brought up the lapses in the policy and its implementation so that will help my government as well as it organizations to tackle this issue you know my findings will help them in looking new uh, with a new perspective to, towards the policies so that is uh, there and of course uh, career progression and motherhood you know motherhood also has not been even though it is so important a factor there is only there are only two studies that i found that they talk about motherhood uh, contributing to giving rise to work family issues but motherhood impacting you know even the payment as well as the promotions 
and entirely the career progression of women has not been addressed. So that also becomes a really very important factor wherein I made the original academic contribution to the knowledge, you know. And I feel that if my findings are taken by the IT organizations and the Indian government, it would help them in formulating policies because I am sure society doesn't change overnight. You know, <laughs> it is gradual transition. It is yeah, gradual right. change in society. Mm -hmm. But policies can be changed overnight. Right. So if the government and the IT organizations feel they can, uh, of course, you know, change the policies and make it little easy for women to progress. So that is all I can say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so <laughs> you see, time flies. It runs super quickly this this afternoon. So it's it's uh, five uh, minute past three, which means that we are about to the closings of of this uh, yes. event. Yeah. Um, Doctor Aiswarya Patel, if you could uh, provide us a very short summary of your study, I think that would be really helpful for us to really, you know, get the okay. point of your study that you've just presented. So, summary of my study is: my study explores the difficulties and challenges women perceive in their career progression, and my study argues that. Uh, inequalities persist in Indian society and Indian IT organization and uh, women negotiate their action element like women actually I, my study argues and establishes that culture and structure of IT organizations and culture and structure of Indian society influences the choices that women make about their career progression. So either they support supportive role or progress in their career, it is always influenced by the culture and structure of family organizations. So that's all. Wonderful. And women perceived uh, the equal opportunities policies negatively. So that is also another aspect of my research. All right. It's very interesting. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you. Aiswarya Patil for your Thank Hi. you. I hope everybody enjoyed. I uh, sure, sure, so sure. <laughs> we learn a lot from from your study. And everyone, if you could, you know, show some reaction, click reaction, and then please, yeah, see. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you can give like love and. <laughs> yes, no problem. I All will right. stop sharing the screen. Okay, <laughs> so that's the end of our, um, you know. Yes, I will share the time. PowerPoint. Yeah, somebody is asking for this, uh, the PowerPoint. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, you yeah. I will, I will uh, email it to Dr. Udi Samanhudi and nice. you can please share with everybody. Okay, yeah. And you can share my email address also if somebody sure. wants to have sure. any questions. Sure. Sure. Any... Sure. We'd love to have another session with you again in the future, Dr. Aiswarya sure. Patil. And thank again, you. thank you very much. This is a brilliant work and this is a very excellent presentation as always. <laughs> thank you. Yes. <laughs> you are... One of the, you know, greatest presenter I've ever met. And now it's, again, you know, like, at that time, uh, I'm, you know, like, uh, leave evidence of your great presentation. Right. Thank you very much once again, uh, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our uh, research talk series four with uh, Dr. Aizwarya Patil of Queen's University, Belfast. Again, the issue about gender equalities and career progressions of women employed in IT sector in India context, I think, has given us a lot of insights about how inequalities, you know, happens everywhere, and which in this case is um, in Indian context, which is probably uh, almost similar when the study is conducted in our in our country in Indonesia due to like, similar um, cultures and uh, society uh, traditions and so on. Okay, once again, thank you very much. Dr. Aizwarya Pate will be in contact again after the meeting for certificate. And thank so you. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Udi Samanude. Thank, thank you. you very Bye. much, everyone. Bye. So this Bye is... and good luck to everyone. Thank right. you. Right. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. And enjoy the rest of, not the rest of the day. Enjoy your day. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> and good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> thank from you. Here. See you. Bye-bye. May I leave now? Yes, yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right, so uh, thank you very much uh, again, everyone, for participating in this um, uh, research talk series four. See you again next month for the same event. 
thank you for your time. Thank you for your uh, your contribution, and thank you for attending this this event. Uh, this is marking the closing of, of the meeting. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Feel free to leave uh, the the Zoom uh, meeting. Bye bye. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, thank you very much.